Hi, it's Chaplain John at Neighbors Care. Um, thanks for joining us again today. Uh, we just thank each one of you for uh, checking in with us um, on a daily basis and and um, liking our videos and viewing them. We thank you for the many, many wonderful comments uh, that you've given us and the encouragement. And um, just to like, encourage your friends to watch and uh, subscribe. Uh, together we can do some really good things uh, down the line, and uh, and we're we're uh, looking for God to do great things. Uh, we really had a great time yesterday at Santa Claus Inc. Uh, Youth Enrichment Services over in San Bernardino, and uh, we certainly um, want to thank them for um, the um, the wonderful tour and and so forth. What we do down there every week is is, is just a ball. There's so many wonderful people. Uh, doing good things in San Bernardino County and Riverside Counties. We thank you for that today. I um, I wanted to address um, one of the comments that came in um, from one of our viewers regarding um, the question that she had, uh, why is it so hard for many Christians to forgive? That's a deep question. And um, first of all, I would like to say to her, thank you for the courage to uh, right as that comment, um, I immediately just felt um, that you have been hurt by someone who um, may have not have forgiven you and that, that calls themselves a Christian. That's very hard to, to live with is uh, unforgiveness, whether we're on the side of unforgiving or the side of that has not been forgiven. We're both held in bondage by those kind of things, aren't we? So I wanted to address that today, and I wanted to thank you again for your question. Um, why is it so hard for Christians uh, to forgive? And um, I'd like to say that um, I, it's not just a problem that Christians have. Um, all of us have that. I think that we have a sin nature in us uh, to begin with. And um, and because of that, there there's um, there's something known as the seven deadly sins. Uh, it's been around for a very long time, and uh, one of those, in fact, it's the first one, is pride. It was the sin that uh, that drove Satan out of heaven, because he felt prideful. He felt that he was every bit as good as God. In fact, that he was equal to God, and there's no one that's equal to God. And so he lost his position in heaven. And boy, that would be tough. I, I think about that myself. If, if I were to lose my position in heaven, whew, that's terrible. So um, pride is, uh, is one of the seven deadly sins. And, and because of that pride, uh, we think that we're, we're like, should not have any, no one should be able to hurt us. No one should hurt us or hurt our family members or whatever. And we have this uh, automatic emotion that wells up inside when, when one of us gets hurt, that uh, we have a right to be angry and we have a right to retribution. We have a right not to forgive that person. And perhaps what they did really was bad. You know, sometimes you and I have done things that needed forgiveness because we didn't do the right thing to, for somebody or by somebody. But they forgave us. And we were able to go on with our life, go on with a relationship with that person, and they were able to do the same and how grateful we were. But a terrible thing happens when we don't forgive. We've seen it destroy families, relationships, friendships, business relationships. Wars are started over those kind of things. Unforgiveness, okay? The second part of that is why Christians? Well, there's a, a lot of reasons. Christians are sinners too. We're just sinners forgiven by grace, but we're still sinners, okay? We have a sin nature in us. That doesn't excuse us from when we hurt somebody and we don't go to them and, and say, I'm sorry, forgive me, or when someone comes to us and asks us for, to for forgiveness and, and we won't forgive them. Um, but we're human, okay, more than anything, we're human, even if we're Christians. But let me tell you something about the name Christians. We hear that a lot, don't we? 
Um, we're Christians. We uh, we go to a Christian church. We're a Christian nation. Uh, we hold to Christian beliefs. Um, what does that mean? You know, in the early days of the followers of Christ, they were called the way. The way, because they followed Jesus Christ. The way, the truth, and the life. It was the way that they lived. It was the way they thought. And so they wanted to follow Christ in that. Jesus said in John chapter 12 that he said, if you want to be my disciple, you will follow me and where I am, my servant will be also and my father who is in heaven will honor him. That's what I strive to do. That's what I would encourage you to follow Christ. You look at him, you look at his life, you look at it, read his words, you listen to what he says, and then you say, I want to be like that. And you ask the Holy Spirit who's now living inside of you because you're part of him. And he helps you, empowers you to walk with Christ every day. It may not always be easy, but he uh, taught us how to do that. He, among everyone, taught us forgiveness. So, first of all, I'd like to again say, I'm sorry that you've been hurt by someone not forgiving you, whether they call themselves a Christian or not. I want to tell you, first of all, that if you have Christ in your heart and you love Christ that, and you've asked for forgiveness from him, that he's already forgiven you. God, the creator of everything that exists in the universe, has already forgiven you. You are freed of that. You are absolutely freed of that. In fact, he says that he takes your sin, whatever he's forgiven you for, and throws it as far as the east is from the west. And obviously that's in opposite directions. And so he doesn't even remember your sin any longer. That's true forgiveness. I think maybe only God can do that. But he's setting the example for us. So I want you to know that today, that your sin is forgiven even if some person has not been able to do that. Be free of that today, will you? Okay, I want to talk about forgiveness. We look at uh, what the Bible has to say about forgiveness, and, and it's uh, written, forgive, forgave, uh, forgiveness, forgiving, um, forgives, forgiving, um, 150 times those words are used in the scripture, in the Bible. It's very important. In Colossians 3.13, it says, uh, from the root word, it came from grace, forgiving, okay? And that's important, okay? Let's read that together. If you have a Bible, you can join me. If not, I'm just gonna read it here. It says, for if you forgive men, their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But, but, if you do not forgive men, their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses or sins. So, if you forgive people, then our heavenly Father will forgive us. But if we don't, if we don't, then neither will your father forgive you of your trespasses. You know, we all put Jesus Christ on the cross. And yet from that cross, he hung up there and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. If Christ, who we put on that cross, could forgive us, then we can certainly forgive other people of their trespasses, their hurts against us. You know, um, there's some other scriptures here we want to look at. In Luke 6, 37, if we look at that, um, here we'll go to Luke 6, 37. And... Um, here it is. It says, judge not, judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Again, another reminder. You know, we. I'll tell you a little something I do. You know, I don't know about you guys, but if, if you're out on the freeways and you're driving, uh, boy, it can get really rough out there 
to be a follower of Jesus Christ, at least in our attitude. You know, somebody cuts you off, somebody does yell something at you, somebody does something at you. There's all kinds of things out there. But the truth is, God wants us to have peace. Christ wants us to have the peace of him inside of us. And how can we do that? Forgiveness. <laughs> so I just do a little thing just on the freeway. It's a little thing, but you know, I used to get so mad. It's like, ah, you know, I get all upset about it. But sometimes I look at those people and they do something, they do something that they shouldn't do, just like I have. <laughs> Only I'm graceful to myself. I'm full of grace to me. I forgive myself very easily, but it's those other people. <laughs> but I look out there and I say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And they don't. Just like we haven't, when we've cut somebody off, we've done something, we've been in a hurry to get somewhere and we ran a red light or a stop sign, we put other people in danger. Maybe we were high, maybe we were drunk. Maybe we've even taken someone's life. And we can go to God and say, Father, forgive me, for I have sinned. And repent. Ask God to help me not to do that again. But I'm telling you, when you go out on the freeway and you drive that way, try it out. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And I just go on my way, driving on down the road. I take my time. I get there. I'm not stressed out. I'm not uptight. I'm not hurting my heart. I'm not giving myself a stroke. <laughs> I'm relaxed. I'm good. I'm good. I'll recommend that to you. So, another Matthew 6.15. So let's go to Matthew 6.15. Oh, this is on the, the Sermon on the Mount. This is when Jesus taught, taught that wonderful sermon. And in uh, chapter 6, beginning in verse 14, it says, For if... <laughs> two letters real important for if you forgive men their trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you if i forgive other people he my heavenly father will also forgive me but but if <laughs> big word if so it's only two letters, but boy, that's really important because it's like it can be if this way or if that way. You, you got to do something that causes an action here. If you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive yours. Now, we've heard that three times here. This is important to God that we forgive. God forgave us. His son came down, went to the cross, took our sins on, on him. All of our sins of the whole world he took on himself and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. As followers of Christ, it's very important that we forgive others and um, forgive ourselves even. Back to my story about Vic, the old man who came to me and, and realized that he had unresolved forgiveness in his life. He hadn't forgiven someone that cost him a a job promotion. He went to that person and he forgave her. And then he asked her to forgive him for holding that against her all those years. This was a guy who was stuck in depression. Maybe you're stuck in depression today. Maybe you have even some health issues from being all uptight from this holding this anger in about not forgiving someone. You know, forgiveness is not just about the other person. It's also for you. And for me to feel better, it's healthy. We're not upset. We're not adding more stress to our life, to our heart, and to our organs, to our mind. We're free to live the Christ wants us to live. It's very important. If you are a Christian, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, then this is a choice. This isn't a feeling. You don't have to feel it. You go to him in prayer today and you say, Father, I want to be able to be a forgiving person. I want to give grace to people in my life, to family members, to friends, to people at work, to the other drivers on the freeways. I want to be a person like you. How about that? So to my friend today, 
uh, forgive those people for not forgiving you. Go to them. The Bible says go to them. Tell them your issue. And and whether they accept it or not, it's okay. You've you've given them permission to let it go. But if they don't, you, you don't have any control over that. But you can do that. It's your choice. You know, there's a wonderful book um, called Feeling Good. Uh, I would recommend that you get it if you can. It's by David Burns. And, um, and it's called Feeling Good. Don't you want to feel good? I want you to feel good today. Okay? And, and uh, a lot of this, his theology or a lot of his therapy is based on Proverbs 23.7. And, and it talks about the way we think in our mind is how we will feel in our hearts. The way we think in our mind is how we will feel in our hearts. If our thinking is wrong, we're going to feel wrong in our hearts. The feelings will be wrong. Does that make sense? Okay. I want you to think about that today. I want you to be in. Uh, I want you to be intentional about going to the Lord in prayer and asking the Lord to help you change your thinking through the Holy Spirit about how you relate to people and and whether you're offering them the same grace in their life that that you want for yourself don't we all want grace don't we all want to be forgiven for the things in our lives that we do then that's what we want to ask him to help us to do to be quick to forgive quick to forgive other people quick to restore that relationship with him and if you need to do that today with a family member, a friend, a person at work, wherever it is, and you have the opportunity to do that today, I'm going to ask you right now that you do that. I'm going to ask that we pray about that right now. Okay? Let's, uh, let's pray. Father God, we love you so much. We thank you for um, your life here. We thank you for showing us how to live kingdom living. We thank you that you've given us your word to show us uh, how to deal with issues that come up in our life, to go to that person and confront that person with an issue and then forgive them or ask them to forgive us. Help us to do that today. Give us the will and the way through your power of the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us, Lord. You, you're there and you say that you're faithful to continue the process of changing us from the inside out. Help us to do that today, Father. Help us to once again experience the relief that comes, the, the, the release that we feel, Lord, when we forgive others and ask them to forgive us, that we can go on and restore those relationships with each other. Help us to do that today, Father God. All of us that are watching um, this video today, that they will share this with other people and they will share the, that you're, the love that you have put in your heart. And um, we thank you for that today, Lord. We thank you for hearing our prayer, hearing our cry, answering our prayer, and sending your word to give us complete salvation, which is a complete healing. It's not just life everlasting with you, but a complete healing. We thank you for that today. We thank you for your word. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much for being a part of our uh, video again today. Um, checking in with us. Neighbors care. Loving God, loving our neighbors, loving people. It's what it's all about, folks. Uh, keep her going. We thank you for your views, and uh, we love you a lot. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.